The UK government has done all it can to help as many people as possible, suggesting that further financial support for those excluded from its previous packages might not be forthcoming. In this video, I'm taking a quick look at a report from the Public Accounts Committee of MPs who are being rather critical about outdated HMRC tax systems, which may have meant that many have fallen through the cracks. Hi everyone, I'm Martin Bamford, a chartered financial planner, personal finance YouTuber and money author. Before I get into this report, please do smash that like button. It only takes a second and it's a huge help with the YouTube algorithm as we continue to grow this channel. Government financial support in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic has been extensive and unprecedented. I think that's a fair assessment of it. Ask anyone at the start of last year if the government would be paying the wages of nearly a third of the UK workforce at its peak of its furlough scheme last May, and they would give you a very funny look. However, despite this widespread support, many groups of people have fallen through the cracks of these support schemes, finding themselves with no financial safety net, despite the inability to work due to lockdown restrictions. And now a committee of MPs has criticised the government for its out-of-date tax systems that have allowed groups to fall through these cracks. According to members of the Public Accounts Committee, some freelancers and some self-employed people were excluded from government support despite the restrictions placed on their ability to trade. The out-of-date tax systems have also enabled some others to abuse the system, making fraudulent or false claims for support. We heard last week that HMRC has received more than 21,000 reports of suspected furlough fraud. HMRC told the BBC last week the coronavirus job retention scheme is part of the collective national effort to protect jobs. This is taxpayers' money and fraudulent claims limit our ability to support people and deprive public services of essential funding. According to the government, its top priority is to support those struggling financially due to the pandemic. However, as I'll come on to talk about in just a moment, they are also claiming that they have done all they can to help as many people as possible, which isn't a particularly positive message, I don't think, for those groups who have found themselves excluded from government financial support. HM Revenue and Customs has provided more than £80 billion in support to businesses and individuals since the onset of the pandemic last March via its various government coronavirus support schemes. Many self-employed people have also been supported with the payments of the Self-Employment Income Support Scheme grants. Round three of that support scheme is open for applications right now, up until the 29th of January. I'll link up here to my video about the latest round of this Self-Employment Income Support Scheme. Everything you need to know is in that video. Despite this extensive government support, MPs on the Public Accounts Committee noted the quirks in the tax system, allowing some groups, including freelancers and some self-employed people who recently became employees, to fall through the cracks. Self-employed people who work on a series of short-term employment contracts, often with gaps in between, have also found themselves ineligible for grants or becoming furloughed. Meg Hillier, MP, who is chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, said, as as public spending balloons to unprecedented levels in response to the pandemic, out-of-date tax systems are one of the barriers to getting help to a significant number of struggling taxpayers who should be entitled to support. She explained that some large companies have received government financial support, which has enabled them to continue paying dividends to their shareholders and salaries to executives. And in some cases, HM Revenue and Customs was failing to identify or deal with companies or individuals wrongly claiming government support. Support. Hillier wants HMRC to tell freelancers and other excluded groups why they have fallen through these cracks, as well as proposing some steps to fix the problem. She has suggested a six-week deadline with these measures. The report from the Public Accounts Committee also pointed to a lack of certainty around government coronavirus support schemes, making it very challenging for businesses to plan ahead, to plan for the future. One example of this uncertainty was around the job retention bonus. This was intended to be paid in respect of each employee brought back off furlough and then retained in a business. This £1,000 bonus was due to be paid to employers at the end of January, but HMRC is unable to confirm whether that incentive has been scrapped entirely or just delayed. The report said such lack of clarity may lead to unnecessary hardships for some businesses who in good faith were relying on the payments from the scheme to meet some of their needs. 
In response, the spokesperson for the government said it has done all it can to help as many people as possible. The spokesperson said HMRC delivered COVID-19 support schemes at unprecedented speed, protecting the livelihoods of millions of people. We do not underestimate the challenges faced by individuals and businesses during the pandemic, and our top priority is getting financial support to those struggling while protecting the taxpayer against fraud. Those not eligible for support through these schemes can still benefit from the strengthened welfare safety net, accessing help like universal credit. Does this government response spell an end to any prospect for those excluded from existing support schemes getting access to new schemes? We've got the budget coming up on Wednesday the 3rd of March, still over a month away, and it looks like we're going to need to wait until then to hear from Chancellor Rishi Sunak about any further support measures which may or may not benefit those excluded groups. At the same time, it now seems very likely that the current national lockdown in England and probably in the other nations too will continue until at least early April with a gradual and phased regional reduction in restrictions to follow that. Reports in the press yesterday suggest that schools will now stay closed until at least Easter, possibly for longer in some parts of the country and then we're going to see tough tier 4 restrictions which could stay in place until at least May. What do you make of this report from the Public Accounts Committee and the subsequent government response? I would love to hear from you, especially if you've been excluded from the various government support schemes. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.